always think, snap out of it. No. Anybody that has entered into depression cannot just snap out of it because it's not him. He's in a state that even he himself cannot control. So, what are those? We have two types of depression. We have the major depressive disorder. I'm not going to go into this because we're not going into medical issues here. But I just want us to just understand those are the issues we do have. The major depressive disorders are, you know, severe disorders when we experience this mood of, you know, being sad over a period of time, feeling of hopelessness and worthlessness over a period of time. And, you know, it's lasted over two weeks. And I always advise, in spite of our spirituality and all of that, why don't you recommend that that person sees a medical practitioner? There's a reason why God made us all to decide to be different things in life. I decided to be a social worker for my own reasons. You might have decided to be an engineer, a medical director, a medical doctor, engineers, all sorts of things. Because we all need ourselves. So if you have, don't be your own doctor. What I'm trying to say here is an average person in Nigeria is his own doctor, his own nurse, his own pharmacist. You know, we literally treat ourselves. And then when we lose control of treatment, that's when we now run to the hospital, when it's chronic. So this awareness is trying to tell us that, look, let's go to the hospital immediately, we see these things. The next one is the persistent depressive disorder, which is also known as the dis, uh, dysmathia, dysthermia, if I'm right. So in this particular, the, the symptoms are quite mild, but they are more chronic. And the, the systems will last for two years and above. And sometimes they are not, if, because we don't, we are all, you know, our own doctors, we don't detect it early. Then you know that. Before you know it, the person has become very chronic. And if not careful, that's when you could come home and you meet somebody who has already killed himself. That will not be our portion or the portion of our loved ones in Jesus' name. But I want us to understand, women are twice likely to be more depressed than men. Why is this? Because of our, humo you know, as women, we have a lot of hormonal imbalance issues. When we give birth, things like that. It affects us. We're a very emotional being, you know? And then before you know it, we start exhibiting all this, you know, we go through issues, marital problems. A lot of marriages are not marriages any longer. Most people are living together literally as partners, you know, cohabiting. It's no longer, oh, sweetheart, babe. No, if some of them even throw punches. And even apart from affecting the mothers, it also affects even some men who don't have that uh, ability to cope very well. And it impacts them. But women, please, please, and please take care of your mental health. Children in such families also have tendencies. We now have a lot of children suffering from depression because children are experiencing things they shouldn't be. Father beating mother, mother degrading the father, bullying in the school, things like that. So please, let's be alert and let's help ourselves. Depression come, could start with mild, when the symptoms are really very mild, you really just feel it's a normal situation, you know. But then it could go from mild to what? Moderate and then severe. When it's at moderate and severe, please, please, in short, when it's at even mild, I recommend, just go to the hospital. When you seek early medical intervention, it's even cheaper for you, truly. But when you wait and it becomes chronic, you know, it's a 50-50 chance the person might come out of it. Same situations, they bring people to the hospital. When I was in the private psychiatric hospital there, and they just, you know they're lying, literally. Because when you see the symptoms, you know this is this that last month. They must have left the guy at home for, you know, years. Before you know it, they'll come back after discharge. He's committed suicide. And that seriously even affects the, you know, the practitioners that took care of that person. So what are those symptoms we have to look at? Okay, let's look at the causes of 20 minutes. We have the internal causes and then we have the external causes. The internal causes, we talk about hereditary. It's been proven that when 
you know, family history of depression, there's a likelihood that one, one, one or two, one person in that family might suffer depression. Or none. You never can tell. But there's been proven history about that. Hormones is another thing that also comes into play. Especially women suffer more from this. You know, when we give birth, detachment from pregnancy and even from child, that's where the hormonal imbalances come into play here. I want to encourage our women that please, please, and please, your mental health should just be as important as your physical health. You see, mental health is, is a wound in our hearts we can't really see. But you can feel it that something about me is odd. You know, maybe you're this outgoing person. You would not realize that you shy away from mixing. You just want to be in your own cage. I wanted to present a one-minute skit to just give us a full, but there's no time. But I believe another time will come and we can look into the skit. We have brain chemistry. There's a part in our brain, really, that, you know, helps our uh, mood. And when the activity slows down there, it can cause depression. Medical conditions also do cause um, depression. You know, people that suffer from chronic medical conditions, such as cancer, heart diseases, it does play a part. Then, of course, you know, we go to the external causes. Loss of a loved one, loss of a job, loss of finances, loss of, you know, just think of all the negative things that could happen to somebody, especially in this present day Nigeria. Can you just put yourself in the shoes of people that maybe have experienced Boko Haram attack or banditry? Do you know the mental trauma they are going through? That could be traumatizing. For children, children equally experience mental, in short, depression. It's so high now in the hospitals. Maybe once in a while, visit a mental health institution. So from there, you could even appreciate what God is doing in your life. You're here, you're seated, you're saying you can function well. There are some people that can't, but they can't explain why. My brother and my sister, let's be our brother's keeper. What are the symptoms of depression? First and foremost, sadness is number one. Consistently sad. Can't explain why you're sad. Irritability. You, any small thing, you just, <laughs> you know? Hopelessness, a feeling of hopelessness. Like, you know, ah, why is my life like this? Ah, oh God. A feeling of worthlessness. Ha! Ah, God. Ah, my mates. Forget, don't compare yourself with anybody. Yo. We are here on individual race. So. And your race is personal with your God. If your friend is succeeding, rejoice with him. It is time. Yours will come. Don't get yourself into depressed situations that even at the end of the day, if money comes, you won't even enjoy the money. So why don't you take it nice and easy, brother? You're welcome. Insomnia, the person will experience lack of sleep. Some people can't sleep. And then some people start sleeping excessively. Some people start eating so much. Some people lack appetite. Some people lose sexual libido. Some people lose interest in things they love to do. Some love going to visit friends, chat. You know, you just all of a sudden, the friend that can come to your place, and you guys will be like, choo, 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 choo. all of a sudden, one week, you've not seen the person. One month, naughty. You'll be like, what's happening, friend? What happened? The person is going through depression. Then we, I want to focus a little bit on children. A lot of children are equally being depressed. And children, you know, they can't really, most of them can't express it. But as parents, we have to be what? Sensitive. We have to look out for those things. And when we spot it, let's try as much as possible to intervene. Number one, children, anger. Anger issue comes in. They also experience sadness, all those things we've said before. <laughs> but anger, any small thing. Me, mommy, leave me alone. Why not? Do, do, do. Any small, you, we want you, what did I say to this child that is acting like this? So, number one. Number two. They also start feeling like that they're, they're not good enough, lack of incompetence. You know, when, especially parents, please don't compare your child to any child. 
every child will grow at his or her own pace. When we start comparing them, we make them start feeling as if they're not good enough. They're not, you know, they're not great. But excuse me, it's been proven over time that actually children that don't perform very well in school end up making it in life. Do you know that? So don't compare no child. His time will come. He will pick up at his own time. Then they, you see them, especially adults also exhibit this crying uncontrollably. They can't explain why they're crying. Some of them don't want to go to school. We wake up in them and say, Mommy, I'm not going to school. No. Ah, why don't you ask him? Why don't you want to go to school? What happened yesterday that I don't want to go to school? Some parents say, I don't go to school now. Sit down. What do you mean, sit down? When you, you were small, if, how dare you tell your parents you're not even going to school? Ah, our fathers of those days will not even hear such things. Nibo, oh yeah, you must go. But <laughs> this is the 21st century. We've got to be involved with our children. Let's talk to them. How was school? What happened in school yesterday? Because some of these children are going through bullying in school. Bullying is real in schools. So please, ask those vital questions. Why don't you want to go to school? Some of them start avoiding friends and family like we say of adults. And then even that a brilliant child in school, when he has gone, when he's experiencing depression, all of a sudden, you realize that his grades start going down. You don't need to shout on that child. Just have a talk with that child. Sweetheart, what's happening? Ha -ha, you that used to do ha -ha, 180, 90 in English. Ha -ha, what happens? You see, that child will talk to you. But it depends on your relationship with your children too. Some fathers are like, ah, I am a tanga. And some women are like carrying fire on the head. Remove it. Let's be our children's friends. And you'll see that they'll tell you things they are going through. Especially when you're talking about teenagers and early adulthood. They are experiencing a lot in school. Guys, all these young guys in university, peer pressure also could affect them. So let's talk to them and let's leave them aright. You'll see that depression will reduce in our society. Now, we're getting to stigma. Dep you see, before I go into stigma, I want to quickly just say this. People that suffer depression, a lot of us are judgmental. But you fail to realize one thing. Anybody at any, body, at any point in time can break down and can suffer from depression. So, why are you stigmatized? Why are you being judgmental? You're doing fine today. Praise God. Hallelujah. But we don't know what will happen tomorrow. Life is not guaranteed to you and I. Events we cannot predict, but we pray. That's why we're in church. And then when it happens, this is why we're here. We're going to learn how to cope with these things when they happen in our lives. So please, let's, remove, let's not be judgmental. Number two, let's remove stigma against depression or any form of mental health disorder. When you see somebody suffering from depression, don't go and start backbiting about that person. Ah, excuse me. So just relax. Please, my brother, my sister. Depression is real. Our, the economic situation in this country is even enough to run anybody cuckoo. Understand. Our coping abilities differ. What I can cope with, you might not be able to cope with. And what you can cope with, I might not be able to cope with. There are some events that when they happen, it hits you to the core. And in short, if you are not, you don't have the correct support system, I tell you, anybody can suffer depression. Depression is treatable. It can be managed when you intervene early. Don't go and lock the person up. I've seen situations where children, and then when the parents bring, they say, please tell my mommy, ah, they should stop flogging me and casting out that demon in me. There's no demon. I don't know what's happening. Please, let's seek medical intervention. Let's not stigmatize against these diseases. It can happen to anybody. In conclusion, psychological first aid. This is where I wanted to present the skit so we could learn how we could help. But I'll just breeze through it. Uh, you know, psychological first aid is just telling us, look, 
this is how, you know, it was introduced after the 9-11 situation in America. After that, a lot of people suffered psychological issues, emotional trauma. Anybody that has witnessed something like that, of course, it will shake you to your core. Two planes entering a building. Even in our present day Nigeria, what some, when you hear what some people have gone through in the hands of this Boko Haram, I tell you, they are powerful people to have survived and can relate with you and I the way we are. But the truth is this. Psychological first aid just literally teaches you and I how we can just provide that intermediate, that immediate support to anybody that could be going through it. Number one, as individuals, we should learn to look. What are they saying about look? We learn to observe for those symptoms we've talked about today, right? We've known the symptoms, feeling of sadness, feelings of irritability, irrational, um, insomnia, excessive sleeping, overeating, not eating, loss of interest in activities, loss of sexual uh, you know, activities, and all of those things that could change a person's feelings. Anything that you notice has changed that person's feelings, that person's uh, mood, you know, and the way he interacts with other people. Let it be, you know, something that will just raise a red flag in your uh, mind and then you look and then try to see how you can help. The next one is telling us that we should do what? Listen. We are so busy in this country, especially Lagos. Everybody is busy doing not, you know. Everybody, ah, I will see you. And then when they heard, ah, he committed suicide, they say, ah, who should pare, no? Ah, life sweet, oh. If I wait, oh, he goes so better, my brother. If only you had given him just five minutes of your busy time, that could have saved a soul. So what am I trying to say here? Out of our busy schedule, some people just need someone to hear them out. Social media is literally, it's killing our social interaction. A lot of people, rather than interacting physically with people, they are busy looking for likes on internet, likes on Facebook, Instagram, and you know, before you know it, there are better interactors on social media than physically. These things also affect us. Let's also provide time to listen. And when you listen to these people, you will be able to, you know, see those symptoms as they are telling you. And then you'll be able to empathize without being judgmental. When some people, they come and meet at you and they say, ah, you know, I'm going through a lot. Ah, do you know that in my place of work, they just retrenched us. Over maybe 200 of us, I was amongst them. I can't cope. You know, I'm the, support, you know, I'm the breadwinner of the family. What next? <laughs> and the person is trying to confide in. We're just looking at him. Mm -hmm. Not only you. Nigeria affects everybody. Oh. You better man up, oh. Ah. My brother, even me. I saw a bin now. As he come, we go take him. You, you can cope. As he come, you feel take him. But that other person, as he come, you know, feel take him. So rather than talk about what you are going through, just empathize with him. Wow, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to hear you've lost your job. Ah, so what, what, when did this happen? Carry the conversation with a very, very supportive way. Lastly, link. Advise the person to visit a medical practitioner. Don't be the doctor. I have seen somebody that has gone through depression before. He did this, he did that, and he's okay today. It worked for him. It might not work for everybody. Let him go to the doctor. Let the doctor be the ones to assess him and then refer him to the specialist. We've got great medical practitioners in this country. I don't care what anybody's saying. Psychiatrists are out there and they're doing wonders. Psychologists are out there and they're doing wonders. We've got great medical team. Take advantage of it. Yes, prayer works. But in a situation like this, we have to first and foremost seek medical intervention and pray like it says, walk towards your faith. Literally, that's what we're doing. And that brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Don't go yet, man. Amen. She's running away. Don't you have questions? 
plenty. But meanwhile, before the question, uh, the immunization people are in the church. If your child is here to be immunized uh, for polio, please, you can take the child to the children's church now so that the child can be immunized against polio. And the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Beloved brethren, you will agree with me that this is highly educative. Am I correct? Uh, there are certain things that we are passing through that cannot be explained. Just yesterday, one of my daughters took a look at me and said, Pastor, I'm not happy with you. I said, ah, you're not happy with me? How can you brought me one carton of wine which day now. How do you say you are not happy with me? He said, I sent you a text message that see, 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 see what I'm passing through. That you did not call me. You did not come to see me. I said, but I sent you a text message saying, don't think like that. See me later. He said, that text I replied that she did not see it until after four days because she was not willing to read or to do anything. He said, but thank God today I am out of it. I'm just giving you a sample. And there are many of us like that. Today, we have heard from experts. The floor is open. If you know you cannot talk, so that let it not be that uh, they will know you are the one. Write. And if you cannot write, even if you are the one, you say one of my friends. <laughs> That's somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> so that they will not know you are the one directly. So the floor is open. We still have about, uh, about five or ten minutes to play with. Yes, sir, brother Roy. Yes, any other person? Yes, ma. Uh, stand, ma. Stand. We don't want questions to lead to questions. And we want... Uh, but mommy, man, you did not tell us drug. What is the role of drug in depression? Particularly among teenagers. You, you add it when you are responding. Any other person with questions? You have your children misbehaving. You don't know why. You have your spouse always in mood switch. Now she's laughing. The next minute, for three days, your wife is not talking to you. Your husband is not talking to you. Praise the Lord. What could be happening? Yes, sir. Yes, any other person? Mommy, Tess, are you raising hand? Okay, because I saw your hand low calling. Okay. Any other person? Okay, we're taking only three. Agreed? Agreed? I say agreed? Okay, let's start from Brother Roy. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Madam, very well said. But I, I, as you, I also have a, a contribution to solution to depression. When you look at the world today, you be depressed. When you look around you today, you be depressed. But when you focus on Christ, you be at peace. You be at rest. Then your focus determine your feelings. Let me pick my pastor's teaching during the negative. He says, whenever he's teaching, what the spirit says. That whenever he asks God for something, and that is not forthcoming, he doesn't bother himself. He doesn't worry. If he has done it before, can he do it again? So I believe that the pressure can be solved. The, the, the pressure won't determine your focus. What you focus on, you focus on God, you'll be at peace. And God will solve the, and God will solve the problem in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Daddy, thank you for bringing mommy to teach this. It's very timing. Ask, uh, I want to ask Ma. I'm coming from the, like Daddy rightly said about drug and, uh, you know, youth. Uh, I want to ask Ma, please, uh, being a social worker, I've been opportune to be in Yaba Sakratis Hospital many times on issues like this. Please, can you, because I'm seeing reoccurrence 
that's the area where I'm going after taking care there's the area of current prayers are done, many things are done love is being shown to that patient at the same time there's a, a reoccurrence you know of that issue and then I want to ask Ma on behalf of habits you know saying that it cannot be able to quit it so what are the advice you can give so that it can be administered to such a patient God bless you Ma are we talking about drugs and substance abuse ma'am? Yes. Okay. Uh, when it comes to issues of drugs and substance abuse, I forgot to highlight that in my presentation. 21% of people that do abuse uh, drugs and substance can suffer from depression. So it's a problem. And for you, you said for when a patient, you know, consistently still having relapse yes, yes, after yes, several yes. treatments. Okay. Drug, you know, it's not easy when somebody is addicted to drugs and to come off it. It takes a lot of, um, you know, they go through the withdrawal system and then they could have a relapse. And I want to encourage you that no matter the experience you're going through, just keep thriving. That person will surely overcome. But don't stop the treatments. It's really not easy getting a drug addict, you know, totally... Uh, rehabilitated, but they can be rehabilitated, but it takes a lot from the parents or from the support group that, you know, that person has, and you see that within you know, few months, sometimes a year you see positive changes, but don't give up, it will surely happen uh, Praise the Lord, that, no, that was the question I, was, I wanted to ask, you have clearment. Amen. I saw a sister stood up before. Let me just take that one. One minute. Praise the Lord. When drug doesn't work, what can someone do? What is the easiest out of depression? Because I can't hear you, ma. When drug doesn't work, because I, personally, I was depressed for a while and I kept taking drugs. I was having this migraine. Um, it all over. I felt like dying. You know, I uh, what um what way out out of depression. Very good. Thank you so much for that question. Seriously, there are two, you know, uh, medical intervention through medication and also therapy. While you were being treated at the hospital, were you also aside from the psychiatrist that was treating you, were they working along with you? I was a psychologist on ground to work with you. You know, the team literally in the psychiatric hospital that really helps people and work together to help people live their lives to the fullest. We're talking about the psychiatric doctors. We're talking about the psychologists. We're talking about the social workers. We're talking about the psychiatric nurses. So while you were being treated, were you also, uh, also receiving psychological, you know, treatments? No, I went for this scan because they thought it was a You could seek second opinion. That's the truth. When you've received treatment over a period of time and you feel that you know, you're, not, you know, you're not getting the result expected, you could seek a second opinion. And you will see that you will eventually get the treatment you deserve. But you do need, with your treatment, aside, the psychiatrist will tell you really that with the, med, uh, the drugs you're being given, you know, you, there was need for you to also walk along with the psychologist and sometimes a social worker. Yes. So you can, you will surely be okay. Maybe you should seek second opinion. I wish you all the best. Let's put our hand together for Jesus. I just want to ask that uh, in the second service, uh, we should save a little time uh, so that we can really, really make it much more interactive because uh, some of the aspects I, I would have wanted us to also uh, delve into uh, because of time we are not able to do that now, which is the, 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 the effect of this depression on our marriages is very key. If, 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 if couple get to an extent that for one month 
they are not communicating. One month or more. And the woman is telling you that it, it doesn't even interest me. I feel like quitting the marriage. Amen? These are issues that we are being confronted with. Uh, maybe in the second service, we'll be able to actually uh, uh, delve into that and see how God will help us. Meanwhile, are we, are we really blessed? Are you sure? Shall we rise? I love one, what one of our brothers said earlier. Jesus is the answer for the world today. I believe there is no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer, is the answer for the world, the world today. today. Second service too, we're going to be looking at the scriptural solution to depression by the special grace of God. But one thing I want you to know is that Jesus is answer to everything. When you look up to him, when you seek him, that's why we are warned against anxiety. He said, be anxious for nothing. Because all the depression thing that we're talking about, they stem out of anxiety, worries, fear of tomorrow. What are you afraid of when Christ is there for you? What are you anxious of that God cannot provide for you? Can you lift up your hand and just appreciate the Almighty God? Thank Him because you have Jesus. It will never be our portion. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I don't know if there's anybody that is here to give his or her life to Christ. I want to do that this morning. Can you just lift up your hand and we pray with you? Is anybody like that? Here to give your her life to Christ. I want to do so. If you are raising your hand, can you raise it above your head so that we can know you are raising your hand? Okay. In absence of not, can we stretch out our hand towards our, uh, our sister, uh, our, our pastor for today and say, God bless you, man. The Lord will increase you in knowledge. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Anything called depression shall not be mentioned among us. God himself will deliver us. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And the people of God will say it better. Put those hands together for Jesus.